Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. This one confuses some people. Take no thought for your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat? The body more than raiment? Go on. Behold the fowls of the hair. For they sow not, neither did they neither did they gather into bands. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Go on. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto your stature? Another one says, add one minute to the time you will live on that. And why take ye thought for clothing? That's raiment. Consider the lilies of the father, how they grow. They turn out, do that, do they spin? Go on. And yet I say to you, that even Solomon in all his economic development was not arrayed like one of these. I know somebody is getting delivered. Go on. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the feet, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Go on. Therefore, take no thought, say, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Where with us shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles, people who are ostracized from God, seek for your heavenly father know that you have need of these things. But seek it. This is the cruise of the matter. But seek it. Don't forget. But seek it first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the things that we had it. I, I'm going to do the equation. The last one. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall so take thought for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's stop there. God knows that the things of this life have capacity to take hold of a man and it will become evil. Just imagine when people are preparing for birthday. Look at how they forget Bible. They are preparing for wedding. Look at how they forget manners. Preparing for graduation. Look at how they forget every other thing. They are hosting a party. They just forget everything about eternity. The things of this life have capacity to take a hold of you, even if you have been internally conscious for more than 20 years, in one minute, you can forget your head. And God can be displaced from the throne. You know, say, I want you every single second, every single minute, every single hour, every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, to only be conscious of eternity. And not take thought of this one. Because eternity has enough power to fill you with the thought and the strategies for this one. This is for somebody who does not have mind that thinks. This is for somebody who has mind that thinks but consciously offer the mind to God. When the Bible says, which one is the greatest commandment? It says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy might. And the second is like, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. I know married people will understand this better. You now know that you need to love your wife now. That is a job. Sometimes some of you have talked to me that it's difficult to me. It's difficult to love her. But you see that it was not difficult when you were only thinking of her bum and her breast. Before you got married. And now you will unwrap it. There was a lot of joy. Say wow. They unwrap a night. They ask somebody. You may kiss the bride. He kissed and he fell down. I mean, I'm just looking at him. I say look at Mogun. <laughs> look at Domi. The mouth that you will hate. That they will bring to you. I say please please. No. <laughs> he, he, he opened the. So one person opened the fail. Over the gay. I say. He is Marie Kay. They just repented the face. Yeah, I said, are, are these people normal? Me, I was that wise. After I married Mirella, I said, go back to the house where you are. I wanted to go and think about this thing that has happened. No, as soon as we got married, she came back to school. We had fellowship that same evening. She was wearing the wedding of God, the garment of wedding <laughs> to the fellowship. GMIT fellowship. It was a Thursday. And I said, go to your house. I go to my house. Let and be thinking of all these things. What has happened to you? Marriage has not been consummated. Nobody has slept with each other. Is it not because of hurry up, hurry up? That's how Jacob went to go and impregnate another woman. 
Only to wake up in the morning and discover that uh, you are not Abdul. <laughs> this is Dawuda. <laughs> a man of God had to come and pray. They pray for three days. They have for some of us to go on three days fasting and pray. They have to come and pray and break every yoke in my house before we start consummation of whatever. Even before the consummation started, we went to family planning court. We went there to go and ask them. We were just arranging. Only God just wanted to catch me. Because we, we, we did everything. Yeah. Answer just came on his own. By the hand of God. Are you, are, you hearing what, are you hearing what I'm saying? God wants you to deliberately, just like married women have to be commanded, husband love your wife. Have you ever seen boyfriend love your girlfriend? No. Fiancé love your fiancé. No. You are imagining, ah, oh, this bed, oh, this girl, you will know me. After you not get married and you are not sleeping together on that same bed, you then say, no, I need, I need, I, I just want to be free. I want to be. <laughs> I've seen people go to the house of their friends, boys, and say, I'm going to love you more if you just allow me to go. <laughs> they go for one week. They are, not, they are not everything they ever, they didn't do as young people. They now begin to do, <laughs> jump. Say, hey, I, hey, say I'm free. They, jump. If the wife now sees the video, I say, he's so happy. And at home, it's just so moody. <laughs> but this is the guy you are looking at. It is at that stage, the Bible now commands, husband, love you. You're not going to bring sweet sensation and put in your heart to say, I love you, baby. But those, those are the times that the wife is not calling. Uh, what name do you call them? That one took her eyes off. <laughs> my love. My love. Ava. <laughs> Instead of over, he said, Ava. <laughs> my love you, Goody. Sweetie. <laughs> as they say it, your ears are not paining you as a woman, as a man. As they say, sweetie, he said, you want to just change your ears? Say, please, 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 please. Did they tell you to me? What is the, what is the, what is the issue that I don't know? Some one, one man of one man of God told me that the wife will greet him in the morning. Good morning. He said, he said, Well, ask the wife, what is good in the morning? This is the same person that was crying. One day, Pastor Sade told me, the way you sometimes make noise on Mirella, do you know how we really petition God before God gave us this gay? I just want you to know. I said, I still remember. He said, You petition God, you wanted to die. I said, don't forget to oh, Pastor David. I said, yes. I was going to Revelation TV in Spain. That, that was February last year. That's what he was telling me. Are you listening? You now have to deliberately love God like that. Your mind is thinking of many things you want to become. But you now say deliberately. I will worship you forever. Love you forever. You see a job that takes your Sunday money. And it's going to be pain. And you have the opportunity of watching the service at a later, later on. And you just say, no God. No God. I'm, not going, to, I'm going to be there physically. I'm going to be there physically. Are you, you battle through this. These are some of the fight that people will become significant in God. Fight. Nobody fight it for them. If you come to me and you say you got job on Sunday, I say go for it. Somebody said, instead of giving me night, they gave me evening. I said, go for it. You will never hear from Mama, don't go for it. Never. Because your personal sacrifice between you and God is between you and God. I made my own mind known. I told God nothing. I stopped education as a teenager because it crossed God's will. I said, I will only obtain education that does not tamper with what I do for you. And all through my life, I've only done part-time education. I've never done full-time. That takes my Sunday or take my day of anything that I do for God. Nothing has ever stopped anything that I do for God. Has he given me education back more than the people that we grow, grew up together? Yes. Or when I talk to you, I look like somebody who is not educated. No. Of course no. I made my own sacrifice as a teenager. When he told me you cannot go to school, they straight away left their net. I know education will not be part of what I will do. 
It was 10 years later. I gave my life to Jesus in 1992. It was 2002 that I now started university education part-time. Only on Saturday. When I had to do masters in this country, it was Tuesdays and Wednesday. But my services that time started from Thursday to Sunday in the church. In God we here. If he was going to take on any Tuesday or whatever, if I had Tuesday service, I wouldn't do it. I would look for another one. I would look for online one. Eventually, I would have gotten online one. Your own personal sacrifice is between you and God. It doesn't have anything to do with pastor. Pastor will not be able to make it on Sunday and say, God be with you. I want to go. There is a particular guy that used to say, uh, you are not on the Bible study on Tuesday. Yeah, I was preparing food for my sister's birthday. Sister that you and him, ah, don't talk normally. How did you become the preparer for the birthday on Tuesdays? Just this one. Is, even if you are forced that one to come, there is no space for knowledge. Knowledge burns for hunger for it to be firmly rooted in anybody. Any knowledge you are not hungry for, you, it, you cannot get it. You have to buy the truth. And the purchasing power is your hunger. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 